Knowing right from wrong. Yes, the question of morality rears its head again. It never seems to go away completely. My return to the topic today is triggered largely by the responses to another video I posted a couple of weeks ago, which wasn't actually about morality per se, but the issue came up again and again in the comments. Although my video wasn't about this topic, the comments tended to focus on one small element of the video, namely the question of whether God's actions, as reported in the Old Testament, were morally defensible. Mostly people responded to the video by trying to do just that, to defend God. Although my video was actually arguing that they didn't need to do that if they took a different approach to the Bible. I don't want to go over all that again here. But many of the comments did get me thinking again about the question of morality. Crudely put, knowing right from wrong. Although I think the question is much more complicated and more nuanced than that. Christians will often challenge atheists by arguing that there can be no moral compass without belief in God. How can I know right from wrong if there's no God? I've argued in another video that I think our innate sense of morality evolved along with our need to cooperate. Cooperation clearly has fitness benefits, but once you start to cooperate, you begin to need all kinds of rules to enable that to happen. Again, I'm not going to go over all this again. If this is the one thing you decide to comment on below, well, you won't be getting a response from me. There is, though, a more proximate question, namely, where do we acquire our actual moral values? Well, we acquire those from a range of sources, from people close to us, such as our parents, our friends, our peer group, our teachers, from media from various teachers, scholars and philosophers down through the ages, maybe from church, and sometimes just from the common beliefs of society. All of this may or may not make any reference to specifically Christian teaching or even to God. But out of these ingredients, we gradually acquire a set of values, consciously or unconsciously, hopefully consciously as we mature. The other essential ingredient in a mature morality is, I think, reason. We shouldn't blindly accept any of these values, but consider them rationally. Challenge these values, even if they're your own. Make rational, considered judgments. Of course, we don't always have to do this. For example, if I have an argument with someone, I, I don't have to decide on each and every occasion whether or not to kill them. Hopefully this has become a firmly established part of my value system. Even it's probably not absolute, though. If given the opportunity to go back in time and assassinate Hitler, the question may be more complicated. Other equally valid values enter the picture. If I decide to join the armed forces, then this question again has to be re-evaluated. Ethical decisions are rarely, in fact, a simple choice between right and wrong. They usually involve different shades of right and wrong. Things can be right in one context or from one point of view, but wrong in another context or from another point of view. Morality is not simple. If it were, would philosophers, religious figures and legal experts have been wrestling with it for so many centuries? If it were, would we have so many legal and ethical systems throughout the world today? If it were, would the values of society and our own personal values change so much over time? No, morality is not simple and straightforward. I suspect that it's because morality can be so complicated that many people simply opt out and rely on someone else to tell them what to do. It could be very tempting. It can also be very tempting to try to turn everything into simple either or, good or evil, black and white choices. But the world doesn't work like that. The temptation to surrender to an external authoritative figure, whether a human autocrat or a divine being, can be very strong. Who wants to make the hard choices, right? Or, if you've already made your decision based on who knows what criteria, who wants to have to provide a rational basis for their decision? So much easier to point to another external authority, 
It is written, God commanded. Having unquestioning blind faith in an external authority is a sign of moral immaturity. It's also very dangerous. God commanded me to do it won't get you acquitted in a human court, though it might get you admitted to a psychiatric institution. Unfortunately, those who might make such a claim probably wouldn't care much about the decision of a secular court because, you know, they answer to a higher authority. Just as Christians often challenge atheists to explain where they get their sense of morality from if they don't believe in God, so too atheists often challenge Christians by asking them questions like this. If God commanded you to go into a school and shoot all the children, would you do it? Unfortunately, most Christians, or at least the Christians who tend to leave comments on videos like this, won't answer this with a clear, resounding no. They usually try to get around it by arguing that God would never command such a thing. But they can't be basing this on God's past behaviour, particularly as depicted in the Old Testament. They also can't be basing this on the behaviour of past Christians who frequently committed equally horrendous acts in the name of God. No, when they say that God would never command such an act, they are in fact appealing to a value system. They're basing this on the deep-seated idea that such an act would be abhorrent, intrinsically evil, and that God would never command such an evil act. This value clearly arises from somewhere outside God. God himself is subject to it. Thankfully, most Christians actually do also have an intrinsic sense of right and wrong. Of course, there are always those few who would answer yes to this question. They would argue that God must have some higher purpose, though they might not know what that purpose is at the time. They might even argue, and I have heard some argue this, that this act wouldn't in fact harm anyone because these children would immediately go to be with God in a better place, free of this world of evil and suffering. If you hear that and don't think that it's morally abhorrent, I suggest you seek help. Fortunately, most people recognise that this is indeed morally abhorrent, and they do so because of an intrinsic sense of right and wrong, the precise content of which was shaped as they grew up. I like to think if they were to hear God commanding such a thing as an inner voice, or perhaps by reading it as some kind of sign in the environment around them, I'd like to think again that they would seek help. I'd like to think that if they heard their pastor or some other religious leader, or a non-religious leader for that matter, commanding such a thing, that they would denounce that person and leave their sphere of influence. True morality does not require submission to an external authority. Quite the opposite, actually. It requires that you be constantly ready to challenge authority. Any person or being who demands your unconditional, absolute and unquestioning obedience is a tyrant and should be brought down.